Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Dijon Mustard. That's right, I'm going to show you how to make your very own Dijon Mustard in the privacy of your own home. And other than the fact it takes about a week before you can taste the final product, this is very, very simple to make. And by the way, this is very fitting. This is the first video of the new year since this was one of my resolutions to finally make homemade Dijon, something that I'd always wanted to do but never tried before. Plus, I figured for a change of pace, why not make a resolution I'm actually going to keep? So let's go ahead and get started. And the first step is we need to make a flavorful liquid in which to soak our mustard seeds. So in a saucepan, we're gonna dump one diced onion, along with some minced garlic, and then of course, it would not be Dijon mustard without the wine. So I'm gonna pour in some white wine. I'm using Sauvignon Blanc. I'm not really sure what that's called in France, but that's what I'm gonna use. We're also gonna want some white wine vinegar and a big splash of water. And what we're gonna to wanna to do here is cook this for about 15 minutes. So we'll set that on high heat. We'll wait for it to come up to a boil. We'll reduce our heat to medium low, and we'll just let that simmer for 15 minutes, at which point we'll turn it off and let it cool to room temp. And once that's happened, we're going to go ahead and strain out the onions and the garlic. And because a couple dozen people will ask, yes, you should save those onions and use them in a soup or an omelet or a stew or a chicken salad or something like that. But anyway, we're going to strain that. Make sure you press out as much liquid as you can with the back of a spoon or a spatula. And what we're left with, they call the Dijon jus. Well, actually, nobody calls it that, but I do, mostly because I like saying jus, which means juice. And once that is strained and ready to go, we are ready to introduce our mustard. And we're going to use two kinds. I'm going to use some yellow mustard seeds and some ground mustard powder. And could you do this with just one or the other? I have absolutely no idea. I've never made this before. So we're going to go ahead and add those to our strained liquid. We're also going to season that up with a little bit of salt and a little bit of garlic powder. And by the way, that is definitely not garlic salt. That is just pure granulated garlic. And what we'll do is we'll give that a mix. And by the way, those little dark things you see floating around, I believe are brown mustard seeds. Man, I really hope that's what they are. But anyway, we're gonna give that a thorough mix. And then what we'll do is we'll wrap this up and let it sit like that for one to two days. So put it in a place where you're pretty much guaranteed not to knock it over. And what's gonna happen is those mustard seeds are gonna swell up, they're gonna soak up that liquid, and you're gonna have something that's much, much thicker. Check it out. In fact, it kind of looks like a grain mustard right now. And if I'm not mistaken, you could cook it like this to make a grain mustard, but I'm not. I'm doing something smoother. So for the next step, we're going to puree this either with a regular blender or this immersion blender that I'm going to use. And of course, how smooth you process this is totally up to you. You are the Captain Ron of your Dijon. So if you only want to blend this a little bit and leave lots of seeds, go ahead. And on the other hand, of course, you could blend this completely smooth, which is kind of the direction I'm going. Although I do want to leave a little bit of texture to it. And no matter what method you're using to blend this, if you need to add a little water, like I did here, to make the blending easier, go ahead. We're going to add some water to this anyway when we cook it. But anyway, like I said, you're going to blend that till it's as smooth as you want. And right here, mine was perfect, except I kept going because it was making really, really cool shapes. But eventually, the novelty of that wore off, and I stopped blending. And once we get to our desired level of smoothness, we're going to transfer that into a saucepan, along with a big splash of water, and we'll mix that in. And the reason we want some water here is because we're going to have to cook this for about 10 minutes. And that's going to be a little tricky if this is too thick. So I want you to stir in enough cold, fresh water until yours has the consistency something very similar to this. So what we'll do is we'll place that on medium-high heat, and we will bring it up to a simmer stirring. I like to use a spatula because you're able to scrape along the bottom. Okay, when you're cooking a mixture this thick and heavy, you can get scorching on the bottom of the pan. And once it starts to bubble, back the heat down to medium and cook it for 10 minutes. And you want to be careful. A mixture this thick really likes to bubble up from the bottom and kind of erupt through the surface. So please be careful not to get hit with any flying molten mustard. And like I said, we're going to cook that on medium for 10 minutes, at which point we'll turn it off. I'll give it one more vigorous stir with a whisk. And that Dijon mustard is pretty much done. And by done, I mean ready to jar. Certainly not ready to eat. In fact, I really don't even want you to taste it yet because it's not going to taste that good. Okay, freshly made mustard has a very raw, very pungent, and not incredibly pleasant taste. Now, having said that, of course you're going to want to taste this, and of course you are going to taste this. Just don't expect it to taste good, that's all. And at that point, while this is still piping hot, I'm going to transfer that into four sterilized half-pint jars. And we want to fill these about a half inch from the top. And generally, when you're doing things like this, you don't really want air bubbles. So you see how I'm kind of moving the spoon, kind of wiggling it around, which should prevent air from being trapped. Of course, once these are filled, you can always give it the old tapa tapa. And if all else fails, you can always use a bamboo skewer for your smaller, more stubborn bubbles. 
And once your mustard has been jarred and debubbled, we'll go ahead and put on the lid, we'll screw down the ring, and when you first do this, if you push your fingertip on the top of the jar, you're gonna feel like a bubble. You see that? But as that hot mixture cools and condenses, it's gonna create a vacuum in that jar, which is gonna pull down that top lid, forming a very, very strong seal. And then once you've done that to all four jars, it's time to wait some more. As I mentioned, freshly made mustard does not taste good. So I'm gonna recommend you let those cool, you pop them in the fridge, and you let those sit at least a week before opening it. Now it could be ready in less time, but I'm gonna leave mine for a week before the official tasting, at which point, finally, your homemade Dijon is ready to enjoy. And considering this is the first time I've ever made it, I was very, very happy. It tastes remarkably like Dijon mustard. So I really was happy with how this came out. But just to be sure, I double checked with a hot dog. So I slathered some over a nice hot wiener. You know, this is one of the parts of the job I really relish. And it was, predictably, even better than on the spoon. Now, whether you should try this and whether you would like this, I don't know. I could totally see someone who uses regular plain yellow mustard not enjoying this. You may not be able to handle the realness. But you know what? There's only one way to find out. So I really hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.